abbreviated bio for both. First, Araceli Montaño, she is my co-host. She is a native Southside Tucsonian, born and raised under dry desert heat. She grew up with two older brothers, infamously making her mama, making her mama's little girl. She began writing after her brother passed away in the fall of 2010 as an outlet to cope and heal her heavy heart. From Sunnyside High School to the University of Arizona, Araceli became the first in her family to graduate college this May. <laughs> Through her work with Spoken Future, she has learned how to teach, facilitate, and be an organizer and activist for her community. She has also co-founded Outspoken, a social justice arts program of the Common, Alliance, Common Ground Alliance in the Cultural and Resources Center in the U of A. She earned her bachelor's degree in global studies, et, I'm sorry, emphasis on human rights, migration, and social movements from the University of Arizona with two minors, Japanese and East Society, while working part-time at Target and running two organizations on the side. This book was a name, Hustling Hermanas for Nothing. Hey! And the second, sorry, our second feature tonight, also a co-author of Hustling Hermanas, Alexia Vasquez is a queer, undocumented, biracial poet, student, and video game enthusiast. She was born in Sonora, Mexico, to parents of Mexican and Chinese descent. She began reading and writing in Spanish at an early age and then in English when she moved to the U.S. in the third grade. As a student at Sunnyside High School, she began attending and later slamming of the Tucson Youth Poetry Slam. She was one of the team who performed, she was part of the team who performed at Brave New Voices in San Francisco representing Spoken Futures, always receiving high praise for her incredible work. Since then, she has become a leader at Spoken Futures, organizing events, planning the types monthly, and thinking of ways to give youth a safe space to speak up about the issues that matter to them. She is currently studying at Pima Community College and is hoping to transfer to the University of Arizona where she will graduate with a degree in computer science. She is very proud that she has performed a spoken word poem to the PCC Board of Governors meeting in 2013 asking for in-state tuition for DACA students which was granted at that historic moment. <laughs> Give it up for your features, y'all. Araceli and Alexia, authors of Hustling in Mana. Hi, everybody. I'm Araceli, and I am one of the um, publishers, co-writers of Hustling Hermanas. So this is our book, Hustling Hermanas. It just came out on March 9th, um, fresh out the press. So essentially, you get two books in one. Um, so we have my side right here, and then you flip it, and then you got Alexia's side on the other side. So you can start from whatever side. There is no front or back. Um, and then in the very middle, you will find a horizontal group piece that was written by both of us and by our mentor and best friend, Sara Gonzalez, which is super awesome. Um, so these books for purchase tonight. If you want one, please see um, Sara or Logan over at the merch table during our break or whenever you would like to. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started. I don't know why I'm holding this mic. Yeah. She wild. <laughs> she wild though. Okay. So I'll each do a couple poems for y'all. Okay. What country are you from? I worked the same retail job for almost four years. It's located what I consider central, 10 minutes east of the university. I've had my share of horror stories, my share of what it's like living under corporate culture while in college to pay bills. Today was no exception. I helped an older woman with permed gray hair and glasses hanging on lanyard. She asked me about accent tables. For 10 minutes, we conversed about the tablecloth she already had and a nice table she wanted to drape it on. I helped her to the best of my ability. Before I turned to leave, she asked me, what country are you from? I promptly responded, I'm from here. Oh, 
from here? Well, I don't know what all the commotion is about, you know. I bit my tongue, squeezed vowels of my ancestors back down, a knot in my throat. She asked, she thanked me for my help while I turned to walk away, and then I cried. This is not the first kind of experience I've had in my workspace, nor will it be the last. But it's the first experience I've had since the presidential election. This rhetoric has always existed here, but now in a more obvious light. She asked me what country I'm from. Her connotation said, you're too brown to be from here. She asked me what country I'm from. Her meaning was, you look like an outsider. But my roots are grounded here since long before treaties and sessions. I am questioned in the only place I've ever known. English is my first language, but with or without accent dehumanized, privileged to be documented, but with or without papers dehumanized, identities constructed. I live in a place that does not recognize me, does not see me as one of its own. She looked into my eyes, unwilling to accept their depth, unwilling to accept my people and our deep roots here. Her words meant to create a dust storm. But I was born and raised in this desert, lady. I'm always shaking dirt off my shoulders. Yeah. yeah. True story. <laughs> Eastside Target ain't no joke. <laughs> ain't. It's not. Hood rats. Woo! They call us. Various interpretations from neighborhood sluts to hyenas to the girls who did hood rat shit. Growing up on the south side, you learn a lot about the ways of the hood. They were written on graffiti walls under bridges like the Bible but with more art. It was easy to fall into mouse traps, skipping school for Sonoran hot dogs, concealing weed for friends, recording fist fights in alleyways, joking about whether the loud bangs were fireworks or gunshots, learning how to jump fences and walls, writing in Sharpie on bathroom stalls, knowing red and blue were more than just colors on police cars, memorizing all the words to Colt 45 by Afro Man while chasing bus routes to the mall, buying from liquor stores instead of gas stations, lying for friends who weren't where they were supposed to be, making my friends lie for me when I wasn't where I was supposed to be, getting drunk in secret spots, wearing hoop earrings, and when they say, the bigger the hoop, the bigger the hoe, wearing larger hoop earrings, <laughs> slipping off cars that honked at me, yelling, you ain't shit for added effect, making teachers want to quit, using <laughs> quinceañeras as an excuse to get dressy, dressy as in looking older than our age, jumping on trains passing by, jumping off before going too far, riding in shopping carts around parking lots, getting kicked out of grocery shops, and eating at the nearby taqueria to laugh about it. Watching friends, become addicted to things I was careful to never try. Witnessing classes shrinking, disappearing dropouts, seeing teachers quit on the spot, rubbing friends, pregnant bellies, working instead of schooling or both, writing letters to the county jail, putting money in an inmate's account, staring down at caskets six feet under, and cleaning up a little too much spilled blood. You'd never guess it by looking at me. Always in the wrong place, but never at the wrong time. As a hood rat, I've run over so many mouse traps, never got snapped, and I've made it out alive. Thank you. Side, but now we're gonna flip over to this side. Yeah. And welcome up my co washer, my co washer, my husband, Mara Lucas! Thank you! Hey, 
Ada's last poem always reminds me of the time when I used to go to quinceañeras. And we used to go to so many, like every single weekend, we just get dropped off. Like we don't know the people, we just, we made friends with the security guards there and they let us in. And, we, and we'd always like put little notes, you know, you know the little books where you can put a note for the quinceañera. And we're like, oh you look so pretty. And then we would call ourselves La Piñas Coladas. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we mentioned that I was undocumented, of course, if you can't read that. I'm a dreamer, so that means that I came here undocumented, and it's always a surprise, like, I guess it's more common when you have like one or two relatives that are undocumented, but like, no, like my whole family is here undocumented, and they're like, really, even your sister? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Why, not? Why is that such a surprise? Anyway, I'm trying to find it. Sorry, I don't know my own book. You got it. <laughs> All right. So, being a dreamer means never sleeping in, having side jobs and staying double shifts all these cereal crumbs and we're always out of milk, all while having an exam on the same week. It means all those countless times that we needed help but my father didn't want it, insisting we're not victims or criminals like those drug addicts. It means humiliation and risks of separation. It means not being good enough to be worthy of a title as simple as being human. Parasites and leeches, they scream to television screens and internet debates. But it's okay because it's not racist, right? I'm still trying to convince myself that it's okay because we're not at the jungle gym fighting over swings. We are in the real world. We're